Hey everyone, Ari Mapur here, and if you haven't joined the Generative AI bandwagon, it is time to get started with this video and many other ones that we've done so far. We're going to use ChatGPT to analyze test data from a real test that I ran recently on a smart battery that I've been profiling. We will drop that information into ChatGPT and start to ask various questions using the natural language model and giving it the ability to present test data to us and analyze it for us just like any data scientist. So join me, let's use our AI assistant to help us analyze our test data. Let's get started. I've just performed a series of tests on one of the smart batteries I've been profiling lately, and I have all of this test data uh, with me. Now, I actually have a great, a larger amount of test data, but as I started to put things into ChatGPT with huge data sets, it kind of fell over flat on its face. I'm sure that'll change over time, but uh, for now, I decided to minimize my shrink down my test set and upload that to ChatGPT. The nice thing about the code interpreter, uh, it's called now the advanced data analysis, is that it can give you all of the commands that it runs. And so most of the processing that it does is in Pandas, which is a Python library, and then using NumPy, Matplotlib, kind of the standard data science tools um, that most developers will use. So what's nice is, A, I get to learn as I go. It shows me exactly the code that it's running. That's something that I don't see with any other generative AI um, as of today, commercially used generative AI. Again, this is, this is the paid version of GPT-4, but uh, this comes in handy, especially if you're trying to learn data science. Um, and if you want to run it locally on a larger data set, uh, this basically what it'll do is it'll run the code within its environment against your data. If it fails or it comes up or it starts to hallucinate code, it'll say, oh, whoops, you know, something happened, an error happened in my code. I need, let me run it again. It'll keep running at least a few times to autocorrect itself. So once it gets the corrected state, it will uh, give you the final code and then you can just run that locally. That's kind of really nice. Again, this isn't Python. Um, a lot of people use Python. If you're using other languages, it's not going to work as nice. It's not going to have that interpreter. I'm sure uh, both ChatGPT and plenty of other AI tools will uh, be providing uh, larger language models and uh, more supporting more languages in, in runtime environments in the future. What I've done is I go and I hit the upload button, the attach files, and then I say, are you capable of processing this data and providing different plots and analyses on it? So if you go to my data, um, this is... Uh, information that came from the registers on the smart battery. And then this is from my equipment here. So I have my power supply, I have my electronic load. And what I was doing was I was charging and discharging, trying to profile a little bit, looking at the temperature, looking at the uh, voltage on my reporting on my load and my power supply. Same thing with current uh, relative to the reported voltage and current on the uh, smart battery uh, registers via SM bus. And then there's a relative state of charge, absolute state of charge, uh, the capacity, uh, and then the runtime to empty. So I am going to, um, I uploaded this information to ChatGPT, and then it says, you know, do you want to and analyze this and, uh, you know, do some stuff? Oh, yes. And so this is what it did. So it, again, it imports pandas and it reads in that CSV file and then just gives me like, you know, a basic, hey, here are the first couple couple lines of your data. And this is what I've analyzed. Would you like me to do something? So I tell it to show me the correlation between the temperature, supply voltage and current, and load voltage current. And again, there's a lot of things that you can have it do. I'm just for demonstration purpose only. I'm doing some very basic fundamental uh, analysis. You can have it do much more complicated analysis, especially st statistical analysis. Um, even some basic machine learning that it'll kick in sidekick learn uh, and profit and some other um, more sophisticated machine learning algorithms uh, that it has baked in as imported libraries. But uh, for this uh, tutorial, we're, we're going to stick with some very basic stuff. 
So first of all, um, I want to understand the correlation between all these different things, uh, all these different values. So I ask it to tell me that correlation and plot it. And it gives me a nice uh, description of what does that mean? So a correlation of one means it's a very strong positive correlation. So if you see supply current versus supply current is one because it's correlated to itself. But supply current to supply voltage are co uh, correlated pretty closely versus um, you have negative correlation, you have positive correlation, load current versus supply voltage. You have a lot of different correlations over here so you can see how things are correlated with each other. So it gives me that plot and then it gives me kind of a rundown and tells me all sorts of different negative correlations, high correlations, so load voltage versus load current, temperature with supply voltage, so on and so forth. So now I said, okay, I want to create three new columns of data. Now I could have it just give me an analysis um, based on power and say, you know, how does power look against this? But it doesn't always understand engineering equations. And so I want to be as clear as possible, especially if it really doesn't require a lot of work on my end. So I'm going to say, let's create three new columns, supply power, which is the voltage times current, and then the load power, which is load voltage times load current, and then the battery power, which in this case, the way that the data was recorded, I needed to um, manipulate it a little bit. So this is how I make my battery power. So it created the three columns, and then it asks me if it wants to perform an analysis. Now, this is the matplotlib uh, portion which um, generates plots for me. So I said, okay, now plot power and battery power against the timestamps, but only when the load power is non-zero. So basically when I'm sinking current uh, out of the battery, I want my load is on and I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to load on that battery and a sink pull energy out of that battery. So this is the correlation. You see they're very, very close to each other. Looks good. Again, could I do this in something like Microsoft Excel or do it manually in Matplotlib? Yeah, of course I could. But this is nice, especially when you start thinking about text to speech, speech to text, um, natural language models. You're going to see long term people uploading data or maybe it's going to be hooked up to your database and you'll be able to just speak to it almost kind of like uh, Jarvis or uh, other systems where you could uh, you could just tell it, hey, you know, OK. Uh, show me the plot between these two. Show me the correlations. Uh, explain to me, you know, how does this fit within that model? You know, what happens if we take out this? Now, there are other integrations of AI that are getting mixed into a lot of software solutions. Uh, even Microsoft Excel just introduced um, their backend of ChatGPT uh, during the time of writing this article and doing this video that does a lot of this. But um, this is really to demonstrate the power and the capability that you'll be able to very, very soon, not only type, but just think out loud and have a conversation with your AI assistant to do all of this analysis with you. So you're really pairing together and doing the analysis. AI is not going to replace the engineers or the data scientists. It's going to pair with them and really enable them, push them encourage them and, and, and make sure that they're getting the data that they want in, in the time that they're looking for. So again, I asked to show me the correlation between the two, and it's very, very clear the correlation. You can see the lines visually there. They follow almost one after another. Some overlap, some move you know, ahead, some are running ahead, some are leading, some are lagging. But for the most part, they're, they're very, very, very uh, correlated between the two. Too. And then I ask for a mean difference, standard deviation. When you have glitches, things like that, it, it will start to mess up some of the mean differences. You need to clean out some of your data. And that's what we're going to show uh, right now. So if I'm going through this analysis and I say, OK, let's perform analysis on the opposite side, I'm now charging my battery. And so I know that there's going to be more than just a little bit of loss from the cable um, and my setup. I know that there's going to be efficiency. There's also glitches um, on my SM bus. There are times where I'm charging or I'm not quite charging. I've turned on my power supply, but I'm not quite charging yet. And so it thinks I'm charging and it's capturing that data in my logs. So the data over here is, is quite a bit messy. And so I need to tell ChatGPT to scrub my data a little bit for me. And so I do it minimally here in this example where I say that you know, these outliers are 
are, you know, considered, you know, things that we don't want. I want you to filter that out. So some of these spikes, it filters out. There's other stati statistical analysis that you could do. Um, but when I ask it to plot a histogram for me, um, I'm kind of okay with the mean difference over here. There's, there's really not a huge uh, difference between uh, the outliers. And so it's relatively, um, the distribution is relatively close to each other. So I'm okay with that data. Um, now, once I've looked at that data, I can perform further analysis. I can download the filter data. So I can say, give me uh, you know, my filter data in a CSV form or an Excel form or whatever file format I want. It'll hand me a download link. I download that and then I can post process that locally later or present it or send it to a, a colleague. Uh, finally, another thing that I want to do is I want to present the idea of running an analysis on a field and asking for any like glitches. And so over here, if you see, um, I say, because sometimes the temperature, uh, onboard temperature I found was the register was not always tracking perfectly. Uh, I started fine tuning my tests. I created a better uh, environment for ambient temperature. Uh, and as I'm charging and discharging the battery, I can see it's pretty uniform, uh, the plot as the temperature goes up and then comes down. Uh, again, it's giving me a histogram and a uh, box plot. And it tells me, you know, it gives me kind of a breakdown and a full, um, <clears throat> full range and uh, analysis on how to uh, look at that to see if there are any glitches. And in this case, for my temperature register, uh, they, it didn't see any glitches. So this is kind of like a light summary of some of the data analysis that we can be performing on ChatGPT. Uh, again, we're gonna see a lot of this showing up in a lot of new software, a lot of online um, software solutions, uh, platforms where you're going to be able to take data from your database or from your test reports. Um, and uh, it's not, remember this isn't just for software engineers. This is physical test data from a physical test uh, off a battery, this can be off your development boards, and you should be empowering yourself to analyze your data. So definitely get started, jump into it, analyze it, test it out, and uh, have fun. So today we got ChatGPT to analyze our test data set from a real world test based on a smart battery that I've been profiling lately. And what we did was we dropped our test data set into ChatGPT and had it answer series of questions that we wanted to uncover as we were analyzing our data. Not only that, but it was also able to run some analysis and generate a whole bunch of different plots for us so we could visualize that data in real time. While this is becoming more prevalent in a lot of different software stacks and different software solutions out there, this tutorial demonstrated the capability of what AI can do to enable us through that process or through that journey and make us data scientists ourselves. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please check out the rest of the generative AI ChatGPT videos that you've seen out there, articles as well. Please hit the like button and definitely subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.